What is up my friends, your weekend has officially began, it is Friday night's Late Night Agenda and you know the score, I'm going to take you through the latest story surrounding our beloved football club with regard to the summer transfer window, ask you guys to let me know your thoughts in the comment section and of course drop a like on the video and if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. Yesterday was a bit of a downbeat day here at Anfield Agenda. I felt like our stream was downbeat. I felt like I was downbeat. And today I'm going to try and be more positive in my analysis of the situation. So right now, what do we know about the world of football? Well, we know that Newcastle have just got a here we go from Fabrizio Romano for their deal for Inter Milan, Sandro Tonali. It's going to be a 70 million euro uh, fee to pay to AC Milan and then the contract is going to be about between 7 and 9 million a year according to Fabrizio so about 150 to 180,000 euro a week which is of course about 125, 130 in sterling so look that's a good move for Newcastle and they would be one club that I would look at as a competitor for Liverpool for those Champions League spots next season so we have to try and look after our business and try and compete with that level so what are we going to do? Well let's give you a bit of an update yesterday on the news that we brought you around Liverpool's apparent offer to uh, Viega for about €100,000 a week. Now, Munder Deportivo said Liverpool have made a contract offer to Gabriel Viega for about £95,000 a week, which is a bit up on the figures we'd seen mentioned yesterday, which said Liverpool and Chelsea were going in at about £83,000 or €100,000 for Viega. It goes on to say the Reds have been following the player with many, for many months and Celta Vigo want Liverpool to pay the full release clause, which is about thirty five million pound or 40 million euro now again a bit of a follow-on from Celta Vigo Rafael Benitez is the new Celta Vigo manager and I hope he maybe has a little word in Viega's ear if indeed he gets a chance to speak with him before the Euros are over or perhaps he departs for a new club but it is a confusing situation because I'm going to contradict exactly what I've said to you now with more information in a couple of moments time and this is where I'm going with today's video let's be honest about it right now a lot of us just don't know what the priorities are where Liverpool are trying to bring players in or not we're seeing lots of newspaper reports we are of course reporting on it here and we're bringing you guys those stories but Outside of Alexis McAllister and seemingly the interest in Thuram, a lot of the other stuff is really up in the air. Like, do we have an offer in for this kid for about €105,000 a week? Honestly, I don't know. I know we've been following Viega for a while, but I don't know if we've gone as far as to speak to his representative about a wage package. And again, if we really do want the player and we've been tracking him for months... We know how easy it is to get the player. Just go in and pay the release clause. It's 40 million euro. Shouldn't be too much of a big deal. So again, I'm just wondering, is this a bit of a smokescreen or indeed are we in for the player? Now moving on, a player who is departing Liverpool, albeit only on loan, will be Fabio Carvalho. So we know that Orbi Leipzig have been interested in Fabio for a while. They had an offer to buy him that was rebuffed by the club. But again, as per Fabrizio Romano, Fabio Carvalho will join RB Leipzig on loan until June 2024. Klopp and Liverpool rejected any permanent deal bid. So it looks as though Liverpool think there's a future for Fabio and I like that. Because I've always said to you guys, I rate the kid. It was a little bit disheartening to see that he didn't get many minutes last season. Klopp said he was training well, but those opportunities weren't there for him. And I think going to the Bundesliga to play for RB Leipzig is a fantastic move for him. And I think he'll gain a lot of experience and will definitely be keeping an eye on his progress over in Germany over the next 12 months. So now we're getting to the business end of the video, right? Now we're getting to the areas of uh, either lunacy or happiness or... I don't know, just downright disappointment coming our way. I don't know what the answers are. I'm just going to bring you the stories and ask you guys to give me your thoughts on them. So let's start with Liverpool leading the race for Federico Chiesa. That is what Gazzetta Italia, or excuse me, Gazzetta Italia have come out with today. Liverpool are leading the race for Federico Chiesa. Liverpool willing to get serious for his signing. Jurgen Klopp is behind the recruitment as he's looking to rejuvenate his squad. And they say a fee of around 34 to 38 million is the number that Liverpool would be going in with. Now, this is a little bit less than the valuation that we'd seen mentioned publicly, uh, which is 60 million euro, about 51, 52 million pound. And look, I'd love to think this is true. 
I'd love to think we're in for Chiesa and I'd love to think we can get him in that price back bracket. But I've seen Newcastle. They're interested as well. Their need for uh, an attacking forward is probably more than ours in all honesty. So let's wait and see how it develops. I know Newcastle are looking at more than one wide player. So maybe it's going to be Chiesa. Maybe it'll be somebody else. But I want to know how realistic do you think it is for Liverpool to bring in Chiesa in this window? I would openly sit here and say to you guys, unless Mohamed Salah is willing to move on, I say willing, wanting to move on, excuse me, because I certainly don't want Mo to go. If Mohamed Salah is wanting to move on, then maybe Klopp's looking to bring in another forward to add to his uh, his pretty incredible list of forwards, let's be honest. I mean, I'm over the moon with Diaz, with Darwin, with Gakpo, with uh, Jota and with Mohamed Salah. That is a group of forwards that I'm very happy with. But we've seen lots of stuff about interest from Saudi, uh, and they're not even privately trying to court Mo anymore. They're very publicly saying that they would like to get Mohamed Salah over to the Saudi Arabian League sooner or later. So maybe this is Jurgen Klopp kind of just look into what could happen if indeed Saudi do come in for and I don't know I really don't know and I don't know what PSG's situation with Mo is and I want to believe we're in for Chiesa because I think most of us think he could do a job but we need midfielders so that's where we're going to finish up tonight with the situation regarding Liverpool's midfielders and Graham Bailey who I think is of 90 minutes or something like that said Kefren Thuram and Ryan Gravenberch are Liverpool's main two midfield targets this summer with Manu Kone a backup option now I'm going to look at this from two ways, a positive outlook and a negative outlook. A positive outlook, if we brought in two more midfielders, then we would have at least ticked the box for the three midfielders that most of us felt like we needed to bring in. But would I feel that adding Kefren Thuram and Ryan Gravenberch, along with the great signing of Alexis McAllister, would I feel that that's enough? No. I wouldn't because I've got serious reservations and concerns about Ryan Gravenberch. Really don't know if he's going to be what many people believe he could be. And that's the important factor for me, could be. Because we're not seeing it over the past 12 months. Yes, he showed a lot more promise at Ajax. But from you guys and from my interactions with you and our Discord group and in our live streams, Kone would certainly be more of a preference to the Reds that I've been speaking to. For me, I want Barella and Thuram and McAllister and that is a window that I could absolutely get behind. And you know what? It's a window I think should be somewhat realistic to Liverpool Football Club. If Barella's going to be £65 million, uh, McAllister £35 million, and Kefren Thuram another £35 million, that's £135 million and then we need to bring in a centre-back. Surely that should be doable in this one big rebuild window. Now, I've seen people mention war chests of 200 million, 250 million. I've got to be honest, I've never seen any credible source give a number because I don't believe Liverpool would publicly put a number out there. They have to get positions ticked off and they want to get the best deals that they can. No problem with that. I just don't think Ryan Gravenberch, Kevin Thuram and Alexis McAllister is enough. It's two thirds of a good midfield. I'm just not sold on Graven Birch. So now it is over to you. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with Graham Bailey's diagnosis there that Thuram and Ryan Graven Birch are the main two targets and Kone is a backup option? Or, like most of our chat, would you prefer Kone instead of Graven Birch? Would that make the window a bit more appealing to you? And what do you think is going to happen with centre back? Because Mickey van de Ven is the only one that I've seen, but according to the journalists, we're looking at many centre backs. So maybe some suggestions from you guys. So that is it for us today. And I will catch up with you guys at some point over the weekend. I'm going to take a couple of days off because it's my wife's birthday on Sunday. And as always, just a little shout out to our live show as well. Tickets are moving good at the minute, thankfully. So if you want to come and see us, don't forget to sugarclub.com. You can find the link to buy tickets in the description of this video. Hope to see you there. Bank holiday weekend in Dublin, August the 4th. It's been a pleasure catching up with you guys as always today. Much love from my family to yours. And I hope you have a cracking weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.